Hello, and welcome to the Next Level Confident Podcast. I so appreciate you being here today. If you have not yet done this, please give this podcast five stars and write a nice little review if you are a listener that is here often. I would really appreciate that. Today, it is just me, and not just me, because the word just, let me just talk about the word just for a second. Did you know that women are more likely to use the word just before saying something about themselves? Because it's a way of diminishing yourself and making yourself smaller. So I have been working on not saying just in front of things, especially when talking about myself, because I'm not trying to diminish myself. Heck no, tech no. Today we're going to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and that is making your bed every morning. If you have been a client of mine, if you follow me on Instagram, if you have connected with me on LinkedIn, you probably see me talk a lot about having a morning ritual. A morning ritual is so important. And so I just want to talk about one piece of that morning ritual, and that is making your bed. Now, making your bed is such a small little thing. And if you're listening and you're just about to start tuning out because you're like, "Eh, it's not that important, I will tell you, this is important because how you do anything is how you do everything. And if you are consistent in doing the small things in life, you will end up becoming consistent in the bigger things in life. That is how I feel about making the bed. So let me just tell you a little story because I wasn't always here. I used to hate making my bed. My mom and dad would make me make my bed all through high school and I thought it was stupid. And before we had guests over, I had to go like tidy my room and make my bed. I was like, people don't need to go in my room having guests over. That's weird. Don't come to my room, people. Um... I I think by the time I got to college, I was just so annoyed that I had to make my bed so often that I just rebelled against it. I was like, nope, not making my bed anymore. And from then on, I stopped making my bed. And it felt really good. It's like sticking it to the man or something. I'm not making my bed anymore. I get up and out of that bed and I don't touch that bed. And I leave for class or I leave for work. And so fast forward to after I graduated, from high school or from college, I um, got my first job at a tech company and I lived about five minutes from that company, which was great because I would just roll out of bed around 8 a.m. I started work at 8.30 a.m. and I would have about 20 minutes between the time that my alarm went off and I got out of bed to the time I was getting out the door. And as you can imagine, it was like a really rushed experience. It was, it was so chaotic. I got out of bed and just immediately got out the door and went to work. And there was no time for peace, no time for relaxation. And a lot of the clients that I, I work with tell me that's how it is for them. They, even, even right now with the quarantine and working from home, um, people still tell me they just, they wake up and they start work. You know, they might drink their, of course, they drink their coffee and like maybe walk their dog if they have a dog, but they don't do anything for themselves to start the day. In my opinion, starting with making your bed is one thing that you do for you to start the day. And I think that is so important. I would get out of bed, leave it messy. And when you come back from work, you feel weird. You look at your bed and you're like, "Eh." you just feel this weird feeling. And, and if you're a person who doesn't make your bed right now, you're, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about because you've either never made your bed before, like your parents never made you, or you haven't in so long that you can't even fathom what it would be like to make your bed. Whenever my clients start the next level confident program, they end up, that's one of the first things I have them do is create their morning routine. And one of the top things that they have to slash get to do I always word it like that. You get to make your bed. You get to work out. Um, One thing they get to do is they make their bed and it becomes a routine. And and so often these women tell me, they're like, it's so weird how small it is, but it's so powerful. It's so powerful that I'm making my bed. I feel so good about myself. 
it's this weird thing where I come home from work and I see my made bed and I'm like, dang, that looks good. And in my personal belief, there's this psychological thing going on here that's saying like, I'm a conqueror. I'm the type of person that gets stuff done. I'm the person that gets out of bed and conquers the day, starts the day. So I was looking up some studies to prepare for this podcast today. And um, on psychologytoday.com, I found a study of 68,000 people. And they asked everyone, do, your, do you make your bed or or do you not? And what they found is that 59% of people do not make their bed. So if you're listening to this and you don't make your bed on a regular basis, or maybe you haven't made your bed in years, you're in the majority. Almost 60% of people don't make their bed on a regular basis. 27% of people said yes, that they do make their bed. And then 12% said that they pay like a housekeeper or someone to do it for them which I guess those people must have a housekeeper coming every day. I don't, I don't know. I don't have a housekeeper coming every day, but they obviously do, I guess, or maybe they only, maybe they actually only make their bed once a week when their house cleaner comes and they, and they put like, my house cleaner does it if it ever gets done. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And so what they found, they also asked a question about happiness. How would you correlate your happiness? Now, I don't know exactly how it was worded in this test because you'd think that they'd be like, there's a two question test. It's like, do you make your bed and are you happy? They'd probably be a little confused. But anyway, I don't know what other questions were asked. 71% of bed makers consider themselves happy people. 71%, that's a pretty high percentage of people that consider themselves a happy person that make their bed. And then 62% of non bed makers admit to being unhappy. Very interesting. So the studies are showing that there is some kind of correlation between making the bed and being happy. Now you could probably, you know, get into a a psychological argument here about what came first, the chicken or the egg. Uh, Did making the bed happen because they're happy or did the happiness come because they made their bed? But I think everything's correlated. So I would be willing to bet just because someone's happy, maybe they made their bed, but maybe if you're unhappy, if you started making your bed, you could be happier. I can say from personal experience that for a long time for me, I really struggled with getting out of bed in in general and not in a way of necessarily sleepiness, although I, I love my sleep. So I think some of it was sleepiness, but some of it was just not being excited for my day and not like, I don't know, the second my alarm went off and it was time to get out of bed, I just, I didn't want to usually. Like my first thoughts of the day were very negative. My first thoughts of the day were like, uh, do I have to get out of bed? Or um, I just don't want to get started. I wish I could take a nap already and I'm not even out of bed. I wish it was time for bedtime tonight, but I'm not out of bed. So um, I get it. If you feel any of those things when you first wake up or, or even darker thoughts, I mean, I, I have pretty crazy dreams. I, I think I'm a very vivid dreamer compared to a lot of people I've met. And I have very realistic dreams, um, that involve like real life situations more so than just, um, I guess things that could never happen in real life. And sometimes when I wake up from those dreams, they feel very like dark and morbid. And I feel weird. I just feel really weird when I wake up. And especially before I began my personal development, um, my personal development journey, I really did struggle waking up and getting out of bed every day. Um, I don't know if I would consider that necessarily depression. Um, but I would just say I woke up feeling probably sad and a little bit like just maybe darkish thoughts first thing. And, And for those of you who know my story, I I did really struggle with a lot of limiting beliefs. I really did struggle with a lot of dark thoughts. And you can listen to my first ever podcast about that, about how I actually thought I was going to be dying in a car accident in my mid twenties for lots and lots of years of my life. It's, it's really a a heartbreaking story now that I'm able to look back on my, my old mindset. Um, But what I did is I started to transition my brain. And when I would wake up, I would notice the negative thoughts. I would notice myself thinking, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. And 
oh my gosh, I, I am not ready to start this day. Does this day have to begin right now? I just want to snooze for as long as I can till the very last minute and just make my day start as late as it can start. And once I started personal development and started to realize, okay, I'm in control of my own brain. I'm in control of my thoughts and I get to choose how I'm going to think even the moment I wake up. Even if I've had a weird dream, even if I'm having some kind of like sad emotions and feelings that are taking over, I get to choose what I'm going to think. And that is where I would usually start to think of things I was grateful for or things that I was looking forward to, or I would have to give myself like little baby pep talks. I'd be like, today's actually going to be awesome. Today's actually going to be really great. I'm excited for today. <laughs> and like, as you can see it, it almost makes you laugh because you're like pepping yourself up with the cheesiest pep talk things but it really works. And even though at first it might feel stupid, you can start to like change your brain by the words that you speak over yourself. The darndest thing. So if you're laying there in bed and you're thinking thoughts like, I don't want to do this. If you just are like, Oh, wait, Janelle said in that one podcast that I can choose my thoughts. I'm going to choose a different thought right now. I'm happy for my day. I'm excited that I get to live this day. And Frankie actually says something that I love. He says, what a beautiful day, filled with love, opportunity, and potential. And he learned it from some <laughs> podcaster or like some, I think it was like an original, an OG, an original gangster of the personal development industry on these like CDs that he had in his car in high school. I'm pretty sure that's where that comes from. And so now every morning when we wake up, we say, what a beautiful day, filled with love, opportunity, and potential. Just like that every single day. Frankie and I wake up and say those words. And I know it's so cheesy and it's so corny, but it works. And even when I'm tired or even when I'm dragging along and feeling sluggish, I'm like, what a beautiful day. Feel love, opportunity, and potential. See, I'm going to say it so many times that it's stuck in your head and you're going to start waking up and saying that too. So you leap out of bed and then you make the dang bed. I know it's the craziest, most novel idea, but it works. Um, it's a really subtle shift. And I, I had this client, Susie, who was recently telling me about, she was frustrated that her morning routine wasn't going as well as we had discussed that it should, you know, should be going. And she was like, you know, I've been doing a really good job. I've been making my bed and I've been chugging my water, but then, you know, my journaling or my reading of like the book isn't going as well. And, and I said, stop, did you hear what you just said? And she was like, no, what did I just say? I was like, you just said, you know, obviously I wake up and I make my bed and I chug my water because those are two parts of the morning ritual. And I was like, that's a big deal because a few months ago, before we started working together, you never drink water before your coffee and you never made your bed. So there are two things that have happened in your life that you do as a constant without even thinking about it now. How freaking cool is that? Am I right? So she was like, yeah, you're right. That is cool. That is a big deal. And these are the little subtle shifts that you got to congratulate yourself on and celebrate the shifts that happen along the way. Because if you can't celebrate them now, you're not going to celebrate the bigger things when they come. You got to slow down long enough to be like, dang, I changed this in my life. I changed this in my life. I changed this in my life. And I am proud of myself. And it's just like a little kid. You know, if you give a little kid a pep talk for doing something awesome, positive psychology, right? Positive reinforcement. You're going to get the kid to do it again. So do it to yourself. Do some positive psychology on yourself. Do some positive reinforcement. Every time you do something awesome, build yourself up. And making your bed is one of those things that you can do that is a subtle shift in your life. And you'll start to do it in other areas of your life. You're telling yourself, I am a go-getter. I am able to do whatever it is that I want to do. I like to complete tasks. From the moment I get out of bed, I am a task completer. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And the thing is, is it leads to other good habits. So if you start making your bed, you're going to end up wanting to do other things because that becomes second nature. So that's second nature. And then something else becomes second nature, like maybe chugging your water. And then that becomes second nature. And then maybe the next thing is reading for 30 minutes in the morning right? And there's all these things. It leads to all these different things. So it's a big deal. Another reason why you should make your bed is because it helps declutter your room. 
I am a very big believer in decluttering the room because I think feng shui is a big deal. And I, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see that I actually put this white brick wall on a mirror behind me because I wanted it to look pretty for all my videos instead of seeing clutter. Because right now I have a really cluttered desk and if I didn't put white brick uh, wallpaper on that mirror, you would see all the clutter around me. And I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I like to clean up every night before I go to bed to make sure things look nice and that things are organized around the house. And I find that when my space is cleaner, I feel more peaceful. But when my space is more cluttered, I feel more stressed and anxious. And I think that making your bed plays into that. It helps you feel more peaceful. It helps you feel more relaxed. And you're like, whoa, this is so cool. What a small but powerful shift. Okay, let's see. Have I said everything that I want to say? It becomes like a ritual, a ritual. It's ritualistic to make your bed. And people have been doing this for many, many, many years, but there's something, and bear with me on this like very strange psychological place I'm about to go. I was having this conversation actually with that same client a few days ago on our client call. And I was talking about what is the human psychology of the ritual behind making your bed and, and unmaking it. So every morning you make it, right? You pull up the covers and if you're anything like me, you have like 20 pillows that go on it so it looks just perfect. And I literally am so OCD on it. I like to line up all the like corners of all my pillows to make sure that they are in this cohesive piece. And then 12 hours later, you rip it all off. You take all 50 pillows off of the bed, you pull all the covers back, you get into the sheets, you sleep, and then you do it again. So if you think about it, it doesn't actually make sense to make your bed at all. Like, what's the point? It's pretty, it's like, you're just gonna unmake it, right? So what's the point? So I started thinking about it on a deeper level, like what is the ritual behind making and unmaking? And making and unmaking. And I thought of like a snake, because <laughs> I'm weird like that. And I was thinking about how snakes they shed that outer layer of skin. I didn't prepare to talk about this part, so I don't actually know what that's called. I don't even know what the skin thing's called. But snakes lose their outer shell of skin, and it's the way they grow. And then they shed again, and they shed again. And I don't know how often they shed, but I'm assuming it's like once a year or something. If I were to take a random guess, you can Google that if you want. I think I might Google it after this. Um, and I was thinking, I think that making your bed is this weird, like, doing and undoing that feels beautiful and rhythmic to the mind and rhythmic to the brain. And so there's something so peaceful about it and something so, it's like growth. It's, it's growth in its most beautiful form. That's what I think. I don't know. I'm curious if you agree with me or if you think I'm crazy now, which is fine. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. The last thing I'll say is it really is the first accomplishment of your day. So if you are sitting here and you're still not fully convinced, why don't you just try it for 30 days? Just try making your bed for 30 days straight and then see if you like it or not. Then if you don't like it, at least you can say, you know what? I tried that whole bed making thing, Janelle, and honestly it's stupid. And I'd be like, oh, well, you gave it a try at least for 30 whole days. But if after 30 days you found that there was something weird about it, there's something about it that just seemed to like, spark a little fire in you in the morning. The scene that's just kind of like light up your day a little bit. Just say like, I'm in control of my day. I get stuff done, you know? Maybe you'll keep doing it. Maybe you'll keep, keep keeping on, on that habit. Yeah, I think that that's pretty much all I have on this one because I just want you to go make your bed. So I'm very, very curious. Let me know, anyone who listens to this podcast, if you are going to start making your bed, DM me on Instagram or shoot me an email, hello at nextlevelconfident.com or DM me on LinkedIn, whatever it looks like. Let me know that you're going to start making your bed because I would love to be able to check in on you and see how it's going. I think a little bit of accountability never hurt anyone. And I also want to hear how the 
the psychology of starting to make your bed shifted you and what pieces of growth you experienced from making your bed every day. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.